Hi guys, welcome back to the Art of Server. So in today's video, I want to talk about SAS 3. Introduced around 2013, SAS 3 is a high-speed communications protocol used between storage devices and controller devices, such as these uh, LSI HBAs that I sell in my eBay store. It allows for data transmission speeds of up to 12 gigabits per second, often used in enterprise servers or high-end workstation computers. Its implementation can be found in both SSDs as well as spinning hard drives. However, just because a device supports SAS 3 does not mean that it can transmit at 12 gigabits per second. For example, there are many enterprise SAS 3 hard drives that will max out at around two gigabits per second, just a fraction of the 12 gigabits per second. This is because the underlying technology of magnetic platters just cannot transmit data as fast as the protocol allows. So you might ask then, what is SAS 3 good for? And that would be the question I hope to answer in this video. All right, so we already know that SAS 3 12 gigabits per second speeds are useless for SAS 3 hard drives. Then the obvious use case is for SAS 3 SSDs. And indeed, if you are using a SAS 3 SSD, uh, you would be doing yourself a disservice if you didn't pair it with a SAS 3 controller. However, when SAS 3 SSDs were first introduced, they also introduced a new problem. You see, on a typical eight SAS lane controller, you have uh, eight SAS 3 SSDs that would theoretically uh, require 96 gigabytes of, or gigabits of total bandwidth. Although in practice, it's kind of closer to 72 gigabits. Either way, 96 or 72, whichever number you want to use, uh, it's going to saturate the PCIe 3.0 by eight bus right here. So ultimately, all the SAS bandwidth that's coming through uh, from all your SAS 3 SSDs is going to bottleneck at that PCIe bus. This situation has improved over the years with newer generation cards that support PCIe uh, 4.0. So if you are serious about the SAS 3 performance of your SSDs, uh, I would recommend uh, exploring some of the newer controller options that support PCI 4.0, like this 9500-8i. So that's the first use case where I would recommend using SAS 3. All right, the other use case where I think SAS 3 makes sense is what I call SAS expander connectivity. And this applies even if you're using spinning hard drives that max out at around two gigabits per second because SAS expanders aggregate IO traffic. Let me show you an example of what I mean. Take for instance, this AEC 82885T SAS 3 expander board. If I connect spinning hard drives to these six ports right here, that's a total of four times six for 24 hard drives. With each drive requiring two gigabits per second, that means for all 24 drives, I would need 48 gigabits per second of aggregate IO bandwidth. Now, if I were using SAS 2, six gigabit speeds, then that would mean I need to connect to two cables to this expander in order to have um, 48 gigabytes or gigabits of bandwidth in order to accommodate for those 24 drives. However, if I instead use a SAS 3 controller like this, let me connect that to a SAS 3 uh, HBA. This is a 9300-8E. Okay, so if I do something like this with a single SAS 3 cable, because this is now 12 gigabits per second, and there are four SAS lanes per cable, this, this single cable will give me 48 gigabits per second of bandwidth. So the larger pipe between the SAS controller and the SAS controller and the SAS expander will provide enough bandwidth for the aggregate of all 24 drives that uh, I was mentioning in this kind of hypothetical scenario of you know, connecting these six ports to 24 drives. The same thinking also applies to other scenarios where you might encounter a SAS expander, such as external driving closures and SAS expander backplanes in a server chassis. 
Of course, you have to make sure that your drive enclosure or SAS expander backplane supports SAS 3 so that when you match it up with a SAS 3 controller, you can take advantage of that higher bandwidth of those 12 gigabit connections. So in summary, the two main use cases for SAS 3 are one, if you're using SAS 3 SSDs, and two, if you are using SAS 3 expanders, whether that's standalone like this uh, in a backplane or in an external enclosure. So if you've been wondering whether you need a SAS 3 controller, I hope this video helps you out. And if you did find this video helpful, be sure to hit the like button. And if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing to see more tips like this. Also, if you wanna support my channel, go check out my eBay store for the best selection of pre-flashed HBA IT mode SAS controllers for your ZFS, TrueNAS, or Unraid server builds. Links are down in the video description. Check them out. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.